Hello friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to Wrap Up Retro where I wrapped up all the oldest books on my TBR and we have one episode left, this one, before the finale which is kind of crazy, I'm very 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 nervous for the finale of this I won't tell you what it is but if you watched last year you know what it is and I'm feeling very nervous about it so I almost, all I'll say is I almost don't want to get a book I really enjoyed this round because then it means <laughs> My chances next video are worse for what I'm about to go through. But anyways, we're gonna unwrap one book and read it like we do in each wrapped up retro episode. And yeah, the oldest books on my TBR, there's not many of them left. We've gotten through them. I'm really so proud of myself for reading so many of the oldest books on my TBR. I'm feeling like a hardcover, right? I think we've read a lot of paperbacks recently. It is mostly still paperbacks, but I just, well, that actually might be, is that a hardcover? I'm not sure what this is. It's like a small, hardcover but I don't know what that could be <laughs> but I think let's go for like a bigger hardcover I'm drawn to this one again I always just have to that's quite big though is it I don't know um I just have to kind of make a decision and go with it I think we're gonna go with this so should we just unwrap it I'm doing it I've started what's gonna happen gonna shoot me I doubt it they have to catch me first I'm like a whippet can you see what it is can you see what it is can you <gasps> okay Okay, 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 okay. We're gonna be reading My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. This is one that over the years, so many have told me to read. If you guys know when you join my Patreon, you get to pick two books off my TBR that you want me to read. And so many people have chosen My Dark Vanessa. I believe it is a pretty hard literary fiction look at a young girl who had a sexual relationship with one of her teachers and he is then years later being accused of abuse by a student and she still believes that it was love, that she was in love with him. So I believe it's quite a difficult, hard look at, you know, what it means to be a victim and be groomed like this, etc. So I don't wanna say I'm excited for it because I think it's gonna be very, you know, dark and difficult, but this is one I've heard so many good things about. Almost wish I hadn't unwrapped this because this would have been a good contender for the next episode. <laughs> But anyways, we're gonna read My Dark Vanessa, and this is one that I think a lot of you could still probably like to hear my my enjoyment of and what I think of it. So, oh, okay, interesting, interesting. Oh my god, it's signed. I have a signed copy. <laughs> Sorry, girly, I didn't know. <laughs> anyways, I'm gonna go start this. I'll check with you when I am a little bit of the way through. to leave us Terry So I'm only about 50 pages into this, so I'll check in with you tomorrow probably once I've read a little bit more. But I wanted to take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is Serious Readers with my Serious Light. I've spoken to you guys quite a bit about how much I love these, but I genuinely use this every single time I read. I use it most, I mostly read in bed, but sometimes when I do reading sprints, I take it over <laughs> to my table so I can read with it there. I love it. So it's just basically a specially designed reading light. A lot of other lights either aren't very strong, so don't really help with reading, or are blue lights and thus aren't very good for our eyes. And what Sirius lights have is something called daylight wavelength technology. So it replicates the daylight spectrum as closely as possible. And so what this does is it it's perfect for our brains, right? It's not kind of this technology that's in opposition to our biology. It's like, it's attuned to what our brain needs. And so it does doesn't make us stay up later. It's very gentle on the eyes. I love it. It's probably my favorite reading 
kit, <laughs> my favorite reading accessory that I have. I adore my serious light. If you've ever wanted to kind of level up your reading, I find I read so much more. I want to read more when I have it on. If Tom comes around and reads, he uses it. We all love my serious light. I cannot recommend it enough. I generally feel like it's been pretty revolutionary to my reading. And when I, like when I went and lived in Wales for a couple months, I didn't have it. And I really did not enjoy reading as much because I didn't have it with me. So yeah, I always recommend them because I just think it's absolutely wonderful. It has an adjustable dimmer so you can adjust how strong you want it to be. Um, I absolutely love it. So I have a great deal for you guys. And that is the code MWB24 will get you £100 off a high definition light plus free UK delivery. They can deliver worldwide. They can also make any kind of plug that you need. So if you need a US plug, a European plug, they can make that. But my code has free UK delivery plus £100 off a high definition light. £100! £100 discount. It's absolutely crazy. Go check out my link down below. I love my serious light so dearly. I use it every single day. Cannot recommend enough. I'm gonna go use it some more this evening to read and I'll check in with you tomorrow once I've reached a little bit further through My Dark Vanessa. Hello, beautiful humans. I have started reading My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. I am on page 142 and I am completely captivated and gripped by this book. Now, I love everything about this. Now, I think I I can't remember what I said to you on the first clip, because I always film the first clip of me opening the book, and then me reading them so far apart for Wrapped Up, because I want to unwrap them so I can maybe fit them onto TV like if I have the chance to. Uh, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But the synopsis of this is it's about a woman who finds out when she's in her 30s a, a piece is published by another woman claiming that a teacher from the school they both went to sexually assaulted her. This woman, our protagonist, had a relationship with that teacher when she was 15 that she believes she was consensual, she was, you know, in control of, and it's her kind of unpacking now what's happening with the other victims coming forward. And it is split timeline, I do want to say that. It's some little chapters in the present day, but majority in the past of us reading about their meeting and everything that happens with them. And it's incredibly difficult reading. This is not a light-hearted book. <laughs> It's not fun. It's an incredibly difficult read. I actually had to stop. I was doing reading sprints last night with my patrons. And in the last sprint, I had to just stop reading. Like I couldn't read anymore last night. I, I was in the middle of a, quite a, I imagine will be one of the most intense scenes of the book. I don't want to spoil anything, but it's around the 100 page mark if you have read the book. And I just couldn't, I just couldn't carry on reading it. Like it is so, horrible, horrible. But I think the writing in this is absolutely incredible. When I am reading it, I cannot put it down. I'm reading it so, so fast. I'm so captivated and drawn in by this story. And, you know, this is a difficult, difficult position to take because I think as readers, we are often taught to believe the narrator right? Like the narrator is our truth in the story, is our, is our you know, our, our basis, our, our anchor in the story. And so we, we instinctively want to agree with them. We instinctively want to agree with what realizations main characters come to or opinions they have on people. And then when you're reading a book that doesn't, that doesn't, that you, you can't, that you are in opposition to what the narrator is often thinking and you're just wanting to like shake them, it's a very difficult read. It reminds me of, in that regard, I'm the Girl by Courtney Summers. That's another one that's tackling similar topics. And I mean, that's a YA. So, I mean, but she is young in the present day in this, but you're kind of viewing her through a different lens because it is adult and we have the older her. I'm the Girl is just when she's young. And uh, I think sometimes with these characters, people reading have have issues with them that they, sh if they had any kind of reading comprehension, they wouldn't, where they kind of blame the character for making bad decisions, for making harmful decisions to themselves, right? They blame them. They go, why, why, why are you doing that? Why are you so stupid? Or, or, or doing, doing things, have, having actions that we wouldn't view as the right thing to do. But like in both of these books, in both these situations and in real life, that is not the correct attitude to have. Am I making any sense? <laughs> I don't really know. I'm trying to talk around it a little bit, but 
I mean, I don't want to say I'm loving it, but I am loving this book in terms of its writing craft, in terms of what it's trying to do, the position it's putting you in as the reader, I think is so interesting and difficult, uh, difficult as a reader. So I'm going to go carry on reading it, but um, I, I think it's quite, quite wonderful as a piece of art that's making you think a lot. I do have some book mail. <laughs> which will just open quickly. I feel like I'm opening, well, I have been opening something in every video lately and I just, you know, I'm so appreciative. This has all happened, it doesn't, I mean, <laughs> so many vlogs in the past I haven't had anything opening in, so I'm not trying to be like braggadocious, is that a word? <laughs> but I'm so thankful for you guys sending me stuff. One is from one of you, I'm assuming, and one is from a publisher. So what have we got? <gasps> oh, interesting. Okay, is there a note? From Amy! The community of Made is truly wonderful. Everybody in Discord is so welcoming and kind and bloody funny. And that's because that is the energy you put out. I hope things get lighter for you soon. Amy, thank you so much. Amy sent me The Heiress by Rachel Hawkins. I didn't realize this was a paperback. Whoa. God, it's, whoa, look at that flop. We don't get that flop that often in UK covers. Whoa. This is The Heiress by Rachel Hawkins. I have read uh, Reckless Girls by Rachel Hawkins and I did really enjoy it. So I've wanted to try more stuff out. So there's a woman who dies and she is North Carolina's richest woman, but she's also notorious because she was the victim of a famous kidnapping as a child. In the aftermath of her death, her adopted son wants little to do with her money and rejects inheritance. But 10 years later, his uncle's death pulls him back in and he goes to the house and it, the house tightens their grip. And there's what happened to her four husbands that she was widowed four times over. Women's stories matter. Yeah. Yeah. Right. They just matter. Yeah. 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 I, I, you know. I'm really, really excited. Rachel Hawkins thrillers to me always scream fun and just kind of ridiculousness and over the topness. So thank you so much, Amy. And then we do have what I believe to be an arc from a publisher. Oh, yay. Okay. We have, oh, that's interesting on the cover. We have, how well do you really know your husband? We have A Talent for Murder by Peter Swanson. Now this is the third in the Henry Lily series, but I've read the first one. I haven't read the second one, but I don't know, like, can someone who's read the second one and maybe this one, I don't know. I don't know if, I feel like this fit follows different topics. I feel like they're kind of standalones, but maybe I do want to read the second one. So maybe I should get to it. Oh, but yes, this is the one where there's a librarian who thinks that her husband is a killer. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't laugh. But like she pieces together the, places that he's been there's been like a lots of unsolved murders during those times so I'm really really looking forward to reading this I really enjoyed The Kindworth Killing which is the first in the series it was my favorite Peter Swanson so I'm very much looking forward to reading this and thank you to the publisher for sending it okay I'm now gonna go read a lot more of my dark Vanessa and hopefully maybe I'll see you tonight or first thing in the morning with some more thoughts a few moments later I literally just <laughs> filming <laughs> two minutes later um another amazon package arrived <laughs> I this is a story about a girl named lucky i'm truly so thankful you guys are being so kind sending stuff to me like you know i'm not really wanting to talk about it but behind the scenes i'm still not the greatest and things still aren't the greatest i just don't want to speak about things or jinx things but i really do appreciate this this is so kind and generous of you guys but let's see what this is I got another book this is exactly what I need today I've got some stressful things <gasps> no this is one I'm really excited for is there a note <gasps> no guys there's no note if you sent this please let me know please message me please comment but it is out there screaming the anthology by Jordan Peele oh hey Meeks you want me to let you out? Okay, one sec. <laughs> this is a horror anthology that I have heard so many good things about and I'm so excited to get into. <gasps> Thank you so much to whoever sent this to me. Oh, I love this edition. Look at those eyes on the end pages. I always love an anthology because you do get to try out a lot of authors that you haven't read from before. And I've, in some past anthologies, found some favorite authors. So please let me know whoever sent this to me. Thank you so much. Okay, now I truly am going to go read. <laughs> so I'll see you later. <laughs> Hello, beautiful humans. I am now about... 260 pages into my dark Vanessa, so I am nearing the end. I am still really, really enjoying this. I'm gonna try and make a point. I'm gonna try and say something, and this may make no sense to anyone, <laughs> but I'm gonna try and say it. So I don't wanna spoil anything about the plot with you, but there's, you know, the plot has obviously got waves to it, and something is happening in the present moment. I'm reading this, and I'm reading the way that she's acting and behaving and the way she's experiencing the world. And it reminds me a lot of when I was like 14, 15, 16. And 
the way that what I was reading would structure things or the way that I'd take things in that I was reading and the way that the writing style of stuff I read at the time. And what's interesting is when I was that age, I wasn't really reading YA, I was reading more adult stuff. I was reading more like, I read The Kite Runner, The Book Thief. These are like my favorite books when I was that age. I don't know how to explain this, but it's making me feel like how I felt as a girl at that time when you're, you're still a child, but you're coming into this maturity, you're coming into this womanhood whilst being a child and that kind of space and how you feel and how you consume the world. And I don't know if that's intentional, but I think it's trying to make you as the reader feel, and I, this could be just a personal thing and just happenstance, but it's trying to make you as a reader feel how you felt at that age where you felt like you're an adult, but you're not. I don't know if that makes any kind of sense. The way that she acts, the way that she behaves, the way that just even the words are written on the page is all very reminiscent for me of stuff I was reading at that time and also how I felt at that time. And I just think that that's fascinating. I absolutely am loving the writing in this. I can't believe Kate Elizabeth Russell, I mean, this came out in 2020. She hadn't published anything else. I think she's gonna become one of those authors that I'm like constantly <laughs> trying to find out on the interwebs <laughs> if there's another book coming. Elizabeth Thomas is another one for that for me, author of Catherine House. Please, Elizabeth Thomas, give us another book. I'm begging you. I'm on my knees on the floor begging you. What do we have here? Yeah, I just think this is so, so interestingly done. I don't know, I can't say any more on how I feel about it, how it's done, other than what I said in the first clip, because I think a lot of it's gonna depend on what kind of opinions she forms as a character in this last section. But I'm gonna go ahead and read it tonight. I'm absolutely loving it. I'm loving it. I think it is just so well done, so well written, so difficult, so gripping. So yeah, I don't know if I'll check with you tonight or first thing in the morning, but I'm gonna go ahead and finish it. And I'm, yeah, I'm just really looking forward to seeing what I think of it. Hello cuties. So I finished, or I take the bookmark out, otherwise I'll lose it. I just, I don't know, there's so many bookmarks lost in these shelves. <laughs> I finished my Dark Vanessa and I have thoughts. I do feel like this last 100 or 80 pages is the weakest part. I think it loses some of what is propelling the book forward and like what is the reason for the book in the other parts and it doesn't quite find its footing but in other in other ways it really does find its footing. And I also think that some of that perception is because I just took too long to read this. I read this over four days. I think I could have read it in two. I, there were just some life things happening that meant I didn't read this as fast as I could have done. And I think I wouldn't have felt that way about the ending if I still had the momentum of the rest of the book, whereas I didn't really. However, despite saying that, I am going to give it a five star because I think that this book is just so deeply, I don't even know, I don't know if I have words for what this book is, and I just want to speak to Kate Elizabeth Russell and say, like, wow, I, you did it. This is incredible, incredibly heartfelt and incredibly difficult, and, and navigating this difficult feelings and difficult emotions with such care and such maturity, but also not shying away from imperfection, I just thought was absolutely, absolutely wonderful. I mean, this is old now, but I really cannot recommend picking this up enough because I think, like I said, it, it, it tackles the topic in such a difficult way. It makes you think about a lot of things and make you think about, you know, so many things. The idea of a perfect victim and how flawed that is. The idea of, you know, the Me Too movement and how a lot of it was arguably co-opted by journalists for their own personal gain rather than care for the victims. And so, and so much more. I, I think, and the way that we talk about victims can sometimes alienate other victims. I just think it's so, so fascinating. And I think, I mean, I don't even, I don't think I'm qualified to talk about how amazingly this tackled the topic that it, that it did, but also imperfectly, you know, and how it recognises that it's doing both. I absolutely loved it. I do have to say, I wish I hadn't unwrapped this though, <laughs> because the finale to Wrapped Up Retro, episode 10, which will come next month, I'll now confirm is going to be, I cannot stop reading until I find a five star episode. And I've never felt more nervous. <laughs> about doing I can't stop reading until I find a five star. Because A, do I have no choice in the matter of what I'm unwrapping and what I'm reading, but B, the selection, you know, the oldest books of my TBR, arguably the least likely to have a five star. So, 
I'm a little bit concerned. I kind of wish this had waited until that episode. Like, could have dropped it first and what would you do? There we go, the episode over. That's what happened last year with the I Can't Stop Being Until I Find a Five Star wrapped up finale. We read one book. I don't think it will be the same this year <laughs> so we shall see so yeah I'll leave you guys to wait for that next month I'm very nervous but I'm excited as well and yes I would very very much recommend this and so glad that I finally got around to it because again this is the whole point of wrapped up retro otherwise this book could have sat on my TBR for so much longer so there we have it everyone I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you very soon in another one bye